Hello everyone. Uh, this is going to be the fifth lesson on the topic 12 of your A-level unit 3 paper. Uh, there were so many requests coming from our followers asking me to do a lesson on how to do a normalizing a database and also to build a logical data model. Uh, so this is for that and uh, since this is an area that you usually get questions in your unit 3 exam papers, this is an important area to focus and learn. So let's start. Uh, before we start, I like to warn you, uh, I'm doing this exercise question from exam past paper, assuming you have a good understanding of uh, what normalization is and the steps to carry out a normalization from a, a given unnormalized data to a third normal uh, form 3NF. So if you know those theory, please continue with the video. But if you don't have the required theory knowledge on normalization, please stop this video and go back to my theory video of uh, which the link can be found on the screen. Uh, listen and learn the theory and then come back to this video. Okay, so let's quickly start on the exercise. Uh, this is from the question number 5 of June 2023 exam paper. Okay, a store sells items used by swimmers. The store currently keeps records of sales in a spreadsheet. Figure 2 shows some of the most recent orders. Manufacturers are listed in brackets in the stock board column. There are four columns, order ID, stock board, date and the customer. The store wants uh, to create a database to store the data. Create table showing the database in third normal form, 3NF. Primary keys must be underlined. Foreign keys must be indicated by an asterisk. Uh, don't include any data in the tables. So those are the, instruct the question and also the instructions that you need to follow. The first step is to convert the unnormalized table to first normal form. To do that, we need to satisfy three things we learned in the theory as well. They are uh, number one, uh, we need to remove any repeating groups of data. Uh, number two, we need to make all non-atomic attributes to atomic. Atomic means only one attribute or data can be held in a single column. Uh, third, we need to identify a suitable primary key. So before we start solving the problem, let's give this row unnormalized table a name. Let's call it uh, order. Let's also change the name of the first attribute from order to order ID. Uh, they are highlighted in red as shown. So we gave a table name as order and also the column name order, we renamed it to order ID. Now we can observe that uh, there are repeating groups in the order table, specifically in the stock board column, the second column. I have highlighted in yellow, so we need to remove those and move to a separate table because there are so many repeating groups inside that uh, column. So we split the order table into two tables like so by creating a new table called order detail and we include the order ID attribute in that table too since we need to link it to the order parent table. Uh, once we remove the repeating group of stock board to a separate table, the new data model would look as shown on the screen. Uh, since there are no more repeating groups, we can move on to the second action of first normal form. Remember I said we have three actions to do in the first normal form. So now we are done with the first normal uh, first action. We need to go through the second action that is Split composite attributes to atomic. Uh, composite attributes are attributes that has a combination of multiple attributes. We can see that the stock board attribute in the table order detail is a composite attribute and it seems to have the quantity board, the name of the stock item and the name of the supplier that supplied the item. So we need to split that attribute to three atomic attributes. Similarly, we can find another composite attribute in the customer attribute uh, of order table as well. 
It seems that the custom attribute is the composition of customer's first name and their last name. So we have to split that attribute into two atomic attributes as well. So once we are done with the split, we will have the two tables uh, with more attributes than earlier. In the order table, we have the first name and last name uh, as two columns now. And notice that uh, uh, and uh, notice what have changed from the original table given in the paper. Uh, apart from taking uh, the unnormalized table into one F, one NF. Uh, you may observe I have standardized the item names in order detail table to be in singular form as shown in red color. Earlier it was like uh, the con since the quantity was two, uh, the details were mentioned as ear plugs, caps, nose clips. Uh, but now I, I have put them in singular form. The third and final action to complete the 1F uh, one NF is to identify appropriate primary keys for each table. Uh, the primary keys has to be unique and also has to be numerical data as much as possible. Uh, we, we rarely choose a text field for primary key due to technical reasons. Uh, the primary key for the order table is straightforward. It's the order ID, right? since it uniquely identify each row and it's a, a numerical. But finding a primary key for the order detail table is difficult to an extent. None of the four attributes individually or combined uh, qualify to be the primary key. Therefore, we must introduce an appropriate new attribute uh, to be the primary key of order detail table. Uh, so I'm going to introduce a numerical attribute called order detail underscore id uh, shortness od underscore id see in the on uh, uh, the screen you can see od underscore id that's for the order detail underscore id uh, that's the primary key that i have introduced uh, so we also underline the primary key and have placed an asterisk after the attribute name in the order detail table because we have to, un as per the instruction given on the paper, we have to underline the primary key and put an asterisk at the end of the uh, foreign key, right? So, there you have the logical data model is now in the first normal form because we completed the three uh, action items that we need to convert the unnormalized data into one NF. So, we are done with that. So move on to step two, that is to convert the logical data model that is in first normal form to second normal form. Uh, remember the prerequisite to attending a 2NF is that the logical data model must already be in 1NF. Now that we have 1NF, we can perform the uh, uh, task to uh, put them into this 2NF. So there's only one action to perform in step two, then that is to remove partial dependencies. So in other words, it means the removal of data attributes that are not completely dependent on primary key and move them to a new tables. We are, so we have to check all the tables, sometimes repeatedly this action uh, to achieve proper uh, 2NF. So here we have our logical data model in first normal form and let's, ex uh, let's examine the order table. We can observe that the date is fully dependent on the order ID, but the customer's first name and last name attributes are not dependent on the order ID. Uh, how do we know that? If you look at the third and fourth data rows, the cells highlighted in yellow, you will notice that the two orders have the same customer, first name and last name. That means though the order ID changes, the customer's first and last name does not change or not dependent on the order. So what should we do? That uh, Yeah, that's right. We move those two attributes to a new table and then let's call it the customer table. Uh, we also introduced a primary key for the customer table called uh, cust underscore ID. Uh, and we added it as a foreign key in the order table to connect the customers with their orders. Right, in the, uh, you can see 
on the first table, the third column is cast underscore ID. Uh, that's act as a foreign key. That is the link to the customer table. Right. So as a final check, a quick glance at order and customer table shows us there are no more partial dependencies in either of those two tables. So we can now focus on to our uh, order detail table. Here too, we see that the attributes item name and supplier name are not completely dependent on the primary key, which is OD underscore ID. Uh, so like we did earlier, we move those two attributes to a new table called item supplier and link item supplier with order detail table. Uh, before we can link the two tables, we need a primary key for the uh, item supplier table. But item name and supplier name are text field and not suitable as a composite primary key. Therefore, I have introduced a primary key called is underscore id which is uh, it stands for item supplier id in short and then i have added is id in order detail table as the foreign key like shown here so once we remove the partial dependencies from the order detail table now we have four tables like so and our logical data model is in the second normal form so now we are ready to work out the third and final step, which is to convert the database structure in uh, second normal form to uh, the third normal form. So the first action to remove transitive dependencies. This question does not have transitive dependencies. Uh, so we move on to the second action, which is to resolve many to many relationships. Uh, in our existing data model, that is in 2NF, we can find uh, one many-to-many -many relationship as have uh, I have highlighted here in yellow. Uh, how do we say so that it's a many-to-many? -many? Uh, so uh, well, from the data given, we can see that one item is supplied by more than one supplier, uh, while a supplier also supply more than one item. For example, earplugs are uh, supplied by Cox and Latex Land, while Cox as a supplier supply earplugs, nose slips, and caps. So, how do we resolve a many to many relationship? Firstly, we need to move supplier name attribute to a new supplier table having its primary key as sub underscore ID. Then we introduce another table which is known as the resolution table that contains the primary keys of the two tables that has the many-to-many -many relationship. So in this example, item and supplier are the cause for the many-to-many -many relationship. So we add the resolution table named item underscore supplier and resolve the many-to-many -many relationship. Uh, so let's focus at how we resolve the many-to-many -many relationship in the item supplier table. Uh, we have the item supplier, which is the item underscore supplier, which is the combined table that has all the combinations of items and supplier. So that is our, our resolution table. What we need is the master tables for item and suppliers individually. As shown on the diagram, we need to split and move the item names to a new table. Let's call it uh, item and similarly we need to split and move the unique list of supplier names to a new table let's call that table supply so as you know from the previous exercise we need to have appropriate primary keys for each of these two tables so let's introduce item underscore id as the primary key for item table and sub underscore id as the primary key for uh, supplier table And once we introduce all those changes, we will get the three tables as so populated with the data as well. And remember when we populate the data into item and supplier tables, we only add one unique entry for each item and for each supplier and then link them in the item supplier as uh, shown here. So here is the complete logical data model in the third normal form. Uh, so this is the answer. You need to remember to show the relationships between tables correctly and to underline the primary keys and to place an asterisk 
at the end of uh, the foreign keys in each table. Okay, this is another question that came in uh, November 2021 exam paper. Question number five. Uh, okay, I'll read through. Evan runs a shoe shop. He sells handmade shoes. Uh, the shoes are made to order, but Evan keeps a selected range in stock for customers to see. So at present, Evan uses a spreadsheet to keep track of his stock. The table shows an extract from the spreadsheet. Right. So Evan wants to replace his spreadsheet with a database. Uh, you must develop a normalized database solution for him. Create entities showing the database in third normal form. Identify all primary keys, uh, single attribute or composite and foreign keys. I'm not going to run through each step of the normalization like I did for the previous question. I did like that for you to understand clearly, but in this question, I will discuss the things to consider and then show the final entity relationship diagram in third normal form. Uh, this question doesn't instruct us on how to mark the primary keys and foreign keys. Remember in the earlier question, they had instruction, but here they don't. But let's underline our primary keys and place an asterisk at the end of foreign keys since that is sort of the common annotation that uh, all are using. So here's our uh, row spreadsheet table as given in the question paper. First thing to do is to add a table name. Since the question says these are to maintain shoe model orders, let's call this table the model table. He makes uh, handmade shoes and made to order. So we call this the model table. So uh, we can see that none of the attributes listed qualify as a primary key because they are either text or they seem to repeat. So we have to introduce the primary field. I will call my primary key uh, the model underscore ID. Uh, now let's examine the attributes. First up, the shoe model. Evan is running a custom made shoe shop. Therefore, it seems by looking at the data, the shoe model is not resold to different customers. Uh, therefore, shoe model is directly related to the order and hence it's fully uh, dependent on the model underscore ID we introduced earlier. Then the company name, company telephone and company email is not depending on uh, order and are partial dependencies. So those needs to be moved to a table named uh, company along with an appropriate new primary key for the company table. I'll call it as company underscore ID. Uh, the order time is directly dependent on the model and order uh, so it belongs uh, in the model table. The color in stock attribute is a repeating group. Further, you can see that while a model is offered in many colors, a single color is available in many models. Therefore, we have a many-to-many -many relationship between the model and the color. First, we have to move the colors to its own table called color and introduce a primary key called color underscore ID. Uh, but we cannot directly add the color underscore ID as a foreign key in the model table because of the many-to-many -many relationship. Therefore, we need an intermediate resolution, a resolution table. We will call it model underscore color and we add the two primary keys of each of the parent tables in uh, model underscore color table. They are model underscore ID from model table and color underscore ID from color table. So if you're confused, go back to the question, uh, the previous question working and look at how we resolve the many-to-many -many relationships. Right, so here is the complete logical data model in the third normal form. Uh, this is the answer. I gave you the instructions how to derive this answer. Uh, remember to show the relationships between tables correctly to underline the primary keys and to place an asterisk at the end of uh, the foreign keys. Okay, so hope you understand how you get your answer in this type of questions and what you need to remember to mark. As mentioned, I have pointed the video to normalization theory video here as well. Uh, and also to your left side is a full uh, list of uh, lessons that I have done on the topic 12. Uh, 
uh, is on your left and to your right is the uh, normalization theory video so good luck guys let's meet again with the uh, new lesson thank you